Tonight on Q2, showering solutions on a growing problem. A way to do something for the folks that are on the streets. One group doing their part to help Billings unhoused population. Plus paying tribute. He was the kind of person that could walk in the room and light the whole room up with just a smile or even a word. Friends and family remember the life of the Bighorn County Sheriff. And a science showdown. Overwhelmed. I'm like, I was a part of something that was pretty big and substantial. Montana meets Australia, thanks to two senior high teachers and their ridiculous experiments. The MTN 10 o'clock news starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Monday night. I'm Andrea Lutz. The Billings unhoused population seems to grow by the day and the winter months can especially be challenging. But now one group is stepping up and looking for help by providing a basic need we often take for granted. Our Haley Monaco has more. Showers and just some space. To As talk. Catherine Carr drives to downtown Billings, the small talk in this car is all about a big gift she's providing to members of our community who don't have a home. A way to do something for the folks that are on the streets. You see, while some help the homeless by providing meals, CARD is helping meet another basic need, one many of us take for granted. Like, sure, I take a shower every day. I take a shower in about, this is like what my... Fourth week, I don't think sure, Justin Hale was at St. Vincent de Paul when Catherine showed up to pick up a small group, offering to drive them to Bethlehem Lutheran Church where they could shower. He's been living on the streets in Billings for two years. I only got like two blankets and that's about it. So. I even have to wear a fourth or fifth layer. It gets that cold here. <laughs> As the weather starts to change, the two hours of warmth, washing up, and snacks that are provided are so appreciated. Cool moisture. Beth Grove has been using the service made possible by CARD, St. Vincent de Paul, and the Salvation Army at Bethlehem Church since they started in March of this year. Oh, well, I'm, I'm very grateful. I think we've served to warm them up and feed them and give them some love. But this is a mission much larger than just Catherine Card. Working two days a week for just four hours a day, a team of volunteers have provided 400 showers for those needing them. But now more than ever, more help is needed. Salvation Army van isn't available. The volunteers usually helping are busy with the holiday season. Because the driver's cooking for Thanksgiving. Simple tasks are asked of the volunteers, such as cleaning showers in between uses and providing a safe, warm, and welcoming place for the people in need. All of them are just like me in so many ways, just like you. And they are our family, they are our neighbors. I want to say God bless these ladies for allowing us to do this. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Tonight, new information into a two-vehicle crash that took the life of Bighorn County Sheriff Daryl King. The 55-year-old died around 5 o'clock last night when he crashed head-on with a semi. The crash took place on Highway 212, four miles southeast of Crow Agency. Sheriff King was pronounced dead at the scene, and the Montana High Patrol says alcohol and speed don't appear to be factors in the crash. King was a Gulf War veteran who spent almost his entire career in law enforcement, including this very special moment when he was sworn in as the Bighorn County Sheriff. Our Alina Howder spoke with heartbroken family as they remember him. There's a cloud hanging over Bighorn County this Monday as friends, family, and community members mourn the loss of 55-year-old Daryl King. The Bighorn County Sheriff accomplished so much in a lifetime that was cut too short. <laughs> The patrol cars stretched one after another after another. A fitting procession as the body of fallen Bighorn County Sheriff Daryl King was escorted back to Hardin Monday. You couldn't ask for a better son, a better brother, a better father. He was one of the greatest men I ever had the privilege of knowing. Mark Denny says his older brother Daryl was his mentor. This is for you, Daryl. A man who made it his mission to make the world a better place. He always wanted to find a way to help the community. And when he said he was going to run for sheriff, 
we all agreed he would be the greatest sheriff ever. The list of Daryl's accomplishments could fill a novel. He was a Marine who served in Desert Storm in Operation Desert Shield. He was proud of that. He was proud to be a military man. And like I said, he wore it on his sleeve every day. Crow Tribal elected Senator Pat Alden Jr. says that's partly why Daryl was elected. They knew he would get the job done. He's been instrumental in um, the law enforcement side and uh, curbing the issues of lack of law enforcement in the county and the reservation. Alden says King was also one of the community's biggest cheerleaders, even sending processions of patrol cars to accompany hard and high teams whenever they would win. Once the volleyball came in, he had bought over 10 squad cars law enforcement escorting them into town so things like that I mean a phone call away and he, he he loved his community and he wanted to get involved. Daryl is survived by his parents, his wife Mary, and two daughters. But he was a friend to anyone who knew him. He didn't make friends, he made family. So everyone that got to know him eventually became a brother, sister, mother, and father. And it's a loss that will take time to heal. He cared for everyone. And the legacy he leaves, I mean, it's going to be hard to feel. And I think that's why it hurts so much. In Hardin, Alina Howder, MTN News. The Bighorn County Commissioners appointed under Sheriff Jeremy Middlestead to act as the interim sheriff. County Commissioners hope to appoint a full-time replacement in the near future as a new sheriff will now need to be elected in the 2024 general election. A Missoula woman charged with killing her two children as they slept is sentenced to life in the care of the state health department. Lena Gardapi was sentenced this morning and transferred to the Department of Health and Human Services. In August, Gardapi changed her plea to guilty. Her children were three and five years old. U.S. officials say a deal to free hostages from Gaza could be closed. The high-stakes negotiations come as thousands are evacuated from Gaza's biggest hospital, including the smallest patients. Dozens of preemie Palestinian babies are now safe after evacuating to Egypt on Sunday. But the doctor says eight of those babies did not survive the journey. Israeli forces say they have more evidence. Hamas used Gaza's largest hospital as a command center, releasing video of a tunnel. And health officials say more than 13,000 Palestinians have been killed, including 5,000 children. All of that violence is happening halfway around the world from Billings, but three Montana farmers find themselves inside the war zone. They've been in the country for a few weeks, helping Israeli farmers, many of whom have been forced to leave their land to fight. Our Charlie Claps shares their story. You've heard the saying before, not all heroes wear capes. And that's certainly the case in Israel right now, with several Montana farmers who work in fields just like this one across the state are coming to the rescue. We've all seen the disturbing sights and sounds of the war. It was just completely brutal. Really, they're not saying it on the news because it's so bad. But while most of us just hear about the violence in Israel, three Montana farmers are living it. There's a certain sense of, of peace about it. I don't think any of us are scared or worried. Um, it's like we know where we stand and we're standing strong in it. The farmers, along with another from Arkansas, are a part of a program called Hyovel. It's existed in Israel for nearly 20 years and brings farmers to the area to help with whatever is needed. Just kind of things that people don't necessarily think about that would be in trouble in these times. A lot of the time, that's help harvesting crops or building fences. And it's help needed now more than ever, as the war has forced farmers into reserve positions within the nation's military. It's not a walk in the park here. It's a you know pretty intense situation, so we want to make sure we're, we're bringing guys that are well aware of, of what's going on. Operating Director Joshua Waller recruited these four specifically. Each has volunteered in Israel before. In addition to helping farmers, Hyoville has also helped raise more than $2 million for Jewish villages to purchase everything from bulletproof jackets and helmets to drones in the fight against Hamas. When Josh called, he said, if there's anywhere in the world that needs you right now, it's, it's Israel. And so that pretty much settled it for me. I decided that I'm not going to ignore that. A big decision. Ploker's family is back home in Hamilton. The Strain brothers are from near Augusta. Well, there's definitely stuff back home that should be getting done. I mean, I have a lot of hay that should be getting sold. Yeah, we dropped what we were doing and came over as soon as we could. I, I can speak for myself and I think the rest of us, we feel safe, but there also is, you know, it is, you do feel the tension because at any moment, you know that you're surrounded by people who share the same 
the same thought process that, of the people that committed uh, the attack on October 7th. But it's a decision they all say is a no-brainer, a chance to help at a time when it's most needed. A lot of people say that they support Israel and they care about the Jewish people and, they, and you know they're pro-Israel. But it's it's one thing saying it, it's another thing actually stepping up and doing it. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Well, we've been talking about the change in the temperatures coming, and this just kind of gives you an idea. Next couple of days, very mild, 60s possible in many locations. Then we start to downshift from those 50s, 60s into the 20s and 30s with good snow making weather to come along with that. And as we've been looking at the computer analysis here over the course of the last 24 hours, things are becoming a little bit clearer. There's a good chance we could see perhaps 8 to 10 inches of snow, maybe up to a foot around the Red Lodge area. For the Sheridan, closer into the mountain foothills around the Bighorns, perhaps 4, 5, 6 inches. And for Billings, we're on track for perhaps 3 or 4 inches of snow for Thanksgiving. A lot more weather to talk about. The complete forecast details in a few minutes. Positively Montana is sponsored by Yellowstone Valley Electric Cooperative. Senior high science teacher Craig Beals is making headlines once again, not just here, but around the world. This time he's not doing it alone. He's teamed up with Sean Jones to become the Bill Nye's of Bronc Nation. The duo joined together to build this massive bowling ball cannon, and it recently earned them a feature spot on one of Australia's most well-known YouTube channels. Jones and Beals say they brainstormed the idea with no big purpose in mind. They simply wanted to see what it would do if you blew it up. And after it was built, it immediately gained, of course, national attention. I got an email from How Ridiculous, and I didn't respond right away because I didn't know if it was real. I'm overwhelmed. I'm like, I was a part of something that was pretty big and substantial. The How Ridiculous crew filmed six videos with the pair to be aired in the future, and this one already a major hit with nearly two million views in just a few days. Still ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news on Q2, lighting the path, a unique bike trail now weaves through downtown Billings. I'll show it to you next. And in sports, a final game changers will break down the top plays from a true championship weekend on the gridiron. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.